Good morning YouTube and today I'm going to do the long awaited, long requested video on beard grooming and styling. Here we go. This is the most I've cut off my beard for a long long time. long now and actually what I want to do is I want to tighten it up and shorten it up a bit because it gets to a certain length where unless you're really intent on growing it and growing it and growing it long which I don't want it starts to do irritating things like whenever you look down it'll spread and then when you look up you end up with it kind of like pushed out which is a little annoying and I like to keep a similar length from front to back I don't like the spade look, which is when it kind of angles down, a bit like that kind of pointy beard look. I don't like that. I like mine to be a bit heavier and a bit squarer, so even. So what I don't want to be doing when I'm going to trim this is I don't want to be creating an angle as I trim. I want to be making an evenish kind of cut. Now, it does take a steady hand and a little bit of practice of this, but once you get it right, it's pretty easy and it's it's kind of, it's unless you do something really stupid, you're gonna be okay. Shampoo your beard, condition it. Then what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna style the beard after getting out of the shower. And I'm gonna put some beard oil on it so it's set and ready to be styled. The worst thing that you can do is have your, have your beard all haywire, unstyled, and start trying to trim it when it's not in a style because hairs that look like they're out of place might actually not be. I'm gonna show you how I style it. It's very simple, you don't want to do too much to it. And then we're gonna shape it in and make it nice and neat. I'm Batman. Okay, so here is all you're gonna kinda of need to do this. I actually got all these things in one place. It's called um, Regal Gentleman online, and they stock all these kind of things, specializing in like beards and male hair products. So it's pretty cool. Uh, I'll, th I'll throw the link in down below. And uh, what you're gonna need is Face Forest Soap. And it's by a company called Mr. Natty Great Britain. So this is basically a shampoo for your beard in the form of soap opened up you can see inside there you've got basically what looks like a bar of soap just lather it up in between your hands and put it into your beard and make sure you get a good lather all the way through if you've had a lot of products and things on your beard then it might not get too foamy on the first run so do it once rinse it all out and then do it again until it gets a good lather because that means then you've got all the impurities and crap out of your beard once it's able to lather up properly. And whilst I'm doing that, obviously I'm washing my hair and stuff as well. So I've been using this, which is uh, the Joe Grooming Daily Shampoo. That one's the Tea Tree and Eucalyptus. That smells really good. Definitely one of the best smelling shampoos I've used. And then we have the, the Daily Conditioner. This is what I also use on my beard afterwards. And um, again, that's a really nice mint smelling thing. And it also has that kind of, this one has that tingle effect because it has a tea tree in it, so it leaves you feeling all tingling and smooth, and that one is like mint, so it's really refreshing. Once you've done all that, got a shower, you've, we're gonna blow dry it, we're then gonna put a beard oil on it, and I got this one, which is really nice smell to it. This is the black pepper and grapefruit, and this one is by the Brighton Beard Company. So a nice UK, UK firm there, that's cool. Let's excuse my horrifically dirty thumbnail, I've been digging through loads of old boxes and crap this morning lovely um anyway so here it is before ready and let's go to post shower you ready Ooh. there we go so all i've done is towel dried it like so all done and dusted and it doesn't look too crazy because i do maintain it pretty well so you can but you can see how if i wasn't to style it i would have these bits curling out here, but styled, they'll sit in perfectly well. So if I was to cut these off now, and then style it, and the hairs turn inward, I'd end up with an indent where they should be sitting. So very important that you don't over egg it when you're doing this trimming malarkey. So I'm gonna brush it through, and you'll see it'll stick out even further when I do this now. Brush it through, and then that's pretty much where I'm at. Right, so we're good to go. All you're gonna need now is Hair dryer minus this bit, one of these brushes, the 
cheap, they're easy to pick up, you can get them at any kind of body care kind of store, things like that. I'm using the GHD new hair dryer, and I have to say, as a bloke, I thought the hair dryer is a hair dryer, but to be honest, this thing is really good, and the fact that they're so good is because they direct a finer stream of hot air where you're aiming it, so you actually end up with a better, quicker effect, so you're blow drying whatever your hair or your beard for less time, which is better, because then you're uh, obviously the hair's under heat for less amount of time, so it's a little better. Um, and if you are going to be using this on your hair and your beard, it's worthwhile investing in a decent hair dryer. We're going to put this on the, the hottest heat and the strongest kind of uh, airflow. And then all we're going to do, aiming down, you never want to do upward, because that's what's going to do is cause your beard to curl up. You always want to be going down and blowing it into the style, so you don't want to be coming here and blowing out, because then you're going to spade it. So you always want to be going in the direction that you want to train the hair to sit. So because that's what you're doing here is you're training the hair to go into a certain style. So downward, coming in with a brush like this first, curling underneath, and then as we come under, we're going to bring the hair dryer there and follow it down. But we're not doing that on this underside bit here, the bit that hangs underneath the jawline. We're only going to go to the jawline from there to there. That's the only bits we're going to do. This bit we kind of want to sit because if we stri if we do this, if we if we pull it down and pull down there, what we end up doing is straightening the hair here, and it elongates it. Actually, takes away a lot of your beard thickness, but it also gives it a, a false look because that the hair actually wants to kind of curl inward a little bit and things like that, and that's what gives the thickness from front to back. So avoid trying to really straighten your beard. We're just training these hairs on the side of the face to sit along the line of the face. Then the hair that's underneath here, we're gonna we're gonna take off any that won't sit in line with the face. That's basically what we're going to do. As it comes over, hair dryer in, down, and boom, like that. Basically, you're just doing that motion with the hairbrush. In, hook it, boom, down. Let's go. So you can see already, how much those hairs that were flicking out, can you see how now they're sitting much more in line with the face, in line with the way I'm training the beard to sit. You don't want to dip, stick your tongue out because that causes them to splay. So you want to just kind of roll your, your lip on over your top lip, bottom teeth, like that, and then just down. Mustache, what you want to do is obviously you don't want it sitting downward into your mouth. So you want to train it to be sitting across here like that. So you want to get the hair dryer and kind of aim it across. You might want to reduce the airflow on that part, but and uh, just watch obviously for the heat, and um, and just train it across, train it across, and then follow it wherever it naturally wants to sit. There and there. So. There you go. That is it, kind of done and trained. See all these little bits here that aren't sitting? I want to trim all of these, make them nice and tight. What you need to do first is just put a tiny bit of product on it. I've been using this for the last few days on my hair, but it's so kind of soft and gentle, I have been using it just to tame my beard a little bit. So this is the Distorter Professional Hair Clay, and it is by hair bond. So there you can see the texture of it and this smells really good as well. It actually smells a bit like apples. It's the only way I can describe it but it's, it's really nice. So you can see it's pretty pretty soft. So literally I'm going to use this amount. That's it. I'm going to spread that over both my hands and then just, just tame the beard. Rub it off my fingertips and then just do this. That's it. Literally it. And a little bit of my fingers just across. Just across. This is not the all day styling or anything like that although it does help on a little daily basis just do this but what I want I'm just training the hairs down into where I want them to be so that I can see which ones I need to take off and how much so that's it pushing on my face and then my jaw finishes here that's where I'm just pushing down to and the rest of it's sitting naturally so you can see how I have a much heavier kind of beard look whereas you get the ones they call them a spade beard where it'll angle like that so all that there will be missing and it'll be an angle like that so up to this stage we haven't used any kind of beard oil or anything like that because you don't want oil on your beard when you're going to put heat through it, that's not going to do it any good. But at this point now again, so we've just tamed it, styled it in, we're just using a little bit of that hair product 
and now what we're going to do is just put a beard oil through it just again so that it helps it sit and obviously treats it after having the hair dryer on it and then from that point that's when we're going to start chopping away and I also forgot I ordered something pretty cool as well for you beard and easters I got myself a Captain Fawcett's beard comb for out and about having it in my pocket because whenever I've been traveling a lot I've found out I never have a bloody brush to hand so we'll take a look at that afterwards as well look at these if you haven't seen them before beard oils if you're new to this if your beard's just a baby this is how they come so it's a glass bottle and a pipette inside and they're really transportable you can pop them in a pocket no worries so pretty cool little things and they tend to they all come like that if they don't they're a bit of a pain in the bum because the oil obviously is it's greasy and it pulls quickly so always opt for one that has these little pipette options so all you're going to do is like this so squeeze and it draws it all up nice that is as that's what you want you want a full level really then into the palm of your hand like so da -da -da. and literally make sure you don't knock it over when you put the pipette back in when you're one-handed done that a lot of times bloody annoying so the smell is citrusy but a little bit of like kind of that hint of spice from the pepper it's really nice uh, i think that is a much more day-to-day -day kind of smell than the kind of eucalyptus um based ones because they're very strong this is a bit more kind of everybody would like this smell kind of thing so anyway i've got the oil in my hands i literally just spread it all over now it's kind of safe you want to put it through from underneath and then come back over the top i'm going to get it right through just nice and gentle and because you styled it it should go back into that trained style oh you can really smell the citrus it's really nice it makes me a little bit hungry so now we're fully prepped and ready to rock and roll for the styling it takes a little bit of bravery to do it but trust me you have to just go very slow and very methodical and make sure that your head is always neutral that's the main point make sure as well that the beard isn't sitting forward underneath like that I want to make sure that it's all back underneath so you've got an even true look at where your beard's at. I'm gonna be a bit I'm gonna be a bit courageous today. I'm gonna to take off say about just under an inch. And I'm not gonna do anything around here really at all. I kinda of like this bit to be a bit wild and grow into the bottom of the beard. If you have hair that grows right down there and there you have these gaps, then screw you, because I'm jealous. I'm going to do two stages. I'm going to th show you um, how I would tame this as it is and keep it the same length. And then obviously I'm going to start shortening it up because I want to make it a little bit tighter and a little bit neater. I'm using a wall beard trimmer. I like mine to have a heavier weight at the back, more square. So what's very important, not only when you're doing this yourself, but also whenever you're going to a barber. Why? Because when the barber has you in a chair, if he has your head back, he starts trimming in a straight line for him he's actually what he's doing is he's going to, your head's going to be back he's going to start cutting in i guarantee you he's not going to cut straight like this he's going to cut backwards you're going to cut at an angle and he's going to give you that spade look so you must have them trim it with your head up sitting tall but facing forward then they can trim flat back so that's also another way of creating the spade look if you want it so with this i'm going to keep my head up and back and I'm going to trim from front evenly front through to the back but if I wanted to create a spade effect what I'd do is slightly tilt my head back and do the same thing but what that would do is then when I bring it forward it would give me that angle down so let's start with just as if you were going to tidy up so what are we looking for all these little bits here that are sticking out with the blades here what I'm doing is keeping them downward facing what I don't want to be doing is cutting in so if I start doing this zoom, and cut in I'm going to take a step out of the beard so I'm going to be moving downward motions like this taking off any unnecessary little bits just just drawing the line and shape of the beard so I have mine quite square but if you wanted that more of a rounded look here you would literally follow the way you want to go keeping the blades in the direction you want to go like that what you wouldn't do is chopping, chopping, chopping. It has to be smooth motions. Just taking off the bits that you can see that don't sit in line in uniformity with the rest of the beard. Final brush through, make sure nothing's tangled. Get all the hairs sitting in the natural place. Portable, nice pocket comb, nice little touches there. Cut throw razor kind of effect. As you can see it doesn't do too much, but what it does do, just brings out bits that don't want to sit and puts pieces that do want to sit 
in place where they should be. Now, my advice to you, when you first start growing your beard, do not cut or mess with your moustache. It takes the longest to grow in, and it's the easiest to mess up and make look bad. Same goes for under here. This again takes a long, long time to grow and fill out. I had that trimmed a lot when I was growing the beard, and it's only just starting to fill in now, properly. On with just a neat nut. Notice at this stage I'm staying quite far away from the beard, it looks like. But I can hear the hairs being cut. You get that kind of like gravelly noise going through. So as long as I'm hearing that, I know I'm taking off hair. That's going to be especially useful towards the front here, where I can't look at the profile from the side. And I just have to judge by going down, just in front of it. And I have a look to the side, see where some are. And then I just go in that rough direction and aim for them. And then I'm listening for that noise away, contact with the hair. See how much cleaner that looks just on the sides, just from that set. Now what I want to do is tidy up here. You can just give it a quick brush do again, just to clear out the little extra hairs. So as you can see now, sides are a lot neater, not pushing out, not sticking off. Underneath, a nice square shape to the entire beard. And what we want to do now at this point is just neaten off just these little points here at the back of the neck. So pulling that hair down, I can see I just want to take that bit off, pulling that hair down here, and say so I just want to take this bit off. So blade in and moving away from the beard. So you're going to go in and away, in and away. Creating a nice, tidy line. My advice here would be this point here, leave that hair growing there. If you want a thick beard, you have to let this neck hair go into the rest of this beard. That's what will cause that nice, solid join there and give the illusion of a deeper beard. If you remove the hair here, that's on that, that neck there, what you're doing is removing that corner, and again you get that sloped look. Moving the hair away, play it in, moving away. Play it in, moving away. So I'm not risking taking off bits of the beard I don't want by going in like that. And there we have nice clean lines of the beard. And you can tidy up by just taking off little extra hairs that are above the line and again look at where you're going put it in and move away in and away avoid doing it like this because that's going to cause you to do more of a scoop a scoop action and that can be really bad because as you go in rather than being able to pinpoint boom put it on the line like so you can't do that because of the angle unless you came in like this it's just not that easy so you're more likely to accidentally come in and take off the roots of longer hairs down here. Whereas this way, there's nothing happening underneath this. There and away. You can create a nice straight line at whatever angle it is you desire. I'm gonna to aim to take off a fair hefty amount, around about this much. So I'm gonna be coming in about here, and taking off that, and we're leveling it off to the back there. So we're gonna lose all of this, and tighten it up and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to judge it if it looks a little too square because it's short I'm just going to take the edges in an angle so rather than coming down and then in I'm going to do both of those to start with and then just going to from that point just rounding the edges by coming in at a slight angle so we're not going going in like that in like that and just work it and again just lightly touching and lightly touching and then just taking away bits that are sticking out and not blending Again, head nice and straight and level all the time. 
don't let yourself tilt or do that because what that's going to do is knock off the symmetry. <sighs> So, here we go, brushing it all out, so it looked like a gnome, you see from here, coming around you see how it's symmetrically, it looks nice and even on each side, then what I'm going to do is brush the back down first, so I've got underneath halfway and I'm brushing back and down, what that's going to do is now when I brush this front down, it's going to stop the front curling around the back hairs which would have been sat forward, so it stops that happening gives you a nice thicker looking beard as well because the hairs are all sat evenly behind one another and then that is my nice new manageable shorter yet still same shape same density I've got that nice side profile there and now when I took my head in what I don't get is that annoying splay it barely moves and I don't get the big hole under my neck very happy that I've done that what I will do is go to the barbers with a real cutthroat I'll have the edges shaped really nice and tightly on both sides and what that will do is with the nice new sharp edges we have here it will really give that nice contrast from skin to beard again if you don't want this kind of edged square look here all you have to do is come in from the side and just start just angling your way in, taking that corner off and just working yourself in this motion, blade down, coming like this, just like this until you get the desired shape. Don't go in like this, because once you've gone in high there and you've chopped a step out, it's game over. So this is something that's going to really help you keep it nice and healthy and looking good taking all the dead ends off that means that's going to grow much better I haven't taken any length off the moustache either so now that becomes a little bit more prominent with the lack of length here which I think looks pretty pretty cool pretty cool these lovely people regal gentlemen 
and I did actually email them asking them if it would be fine for me to show their brand and show their products and of course they were like yeah so I got a little bit cheeky and I'm going to start doing this now with anything I do I'm just going to email the companies that I use things of before and ask them just if they'll if they'll give you guys a discount and they have so you guys can hit up Lex10 at Regal Gentleman the link or their website link will be in the description and you can use the code at their checkout Lex10 and I get 10% off anything just for you guys just for you so hope you've enjoyed this video I hope it's been useful I wish you many happy beard growing days and as and when I think of something more useful and when we hit the barbers I'll check back in with you so until next time Boom, baby.